When a character dies in the comics, it's usually not a permanent problem, which kind of takes the wind out of the Grim Reaper's sails somewhat, because it's like, oh, I'll go collect some souls to make my quota for the day. What do you mean he's already back on his feet? How is that even possible? Well, maybe Death should settle down a little, as just because his target isn't actually ready for the reaping right now, that doesn't mean that his future clients are having a great time of it. From not being able to die to being killed over and over, comic books have found horrible ways to make the end of life itself look like an absolute picnic by comparison. So let's look at some of the most unnerving, horrible, and downright cruel fates for comic book heroes and villains, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 comic book fates worse than death. Number 10. Immortality for most people, the concept of immortality seems like the perfect way to use one of their three magic genie wishes, but if you stop and take a moment to think about it, it's one of the worst fates a mortal can suffer. In most depictions, immortality is a curse, as it means the person is left to watch everyone and everything they care about die and turn to dust. Over time, immortality would surely drive anyone to madness, and this unfortunately is often the case in comic books. To live forever without companionship is a horrible fate, as is the the fact that even if they did want to end it all, they simply couldn't. Just take Orpheus from the Sandman books. He had his head cut off, but still couldn't die, and so had to live on for hundreds and hundreds of years without the use of his body. Imagine if he had an itchy nose. Number 9. Continuously experiencing death over and over and over. In the Vertigo Fable series, Goldilocks isn't some sweet little girl who's just looking for a place to sleep and a little bit of porridge to eat, she's a psychotic killing machine. And while she was ultimately stopped in the series, she suffered a horrible fate that most wouldn't wish on their greatest enemy. In Fables, the character's strength and durability is based on their popularity in the published works that are read by mortals. When a character is as popular and as well known as Goldilocks, she's essentially immortal and very difficult to kill in any permanent fashion. While she was going on one of her killing sprees, she ended up getting an axe to the head which sent her tumbling down a cliff, only to be hit by a speeding truck when she finally hit the bottom. The impact of the truck sent her careening into a river where she remained. She was so badly hurt that she couldn't make it to the shoreline or the surface of the water, and so remained there for weeks. However, get this, she wasn't dead. Instead, she was stuck in a state of always drowning, never dying, for weeks. Grim. Number 8. Trapped on a single world unable to save his own the Silver Surfer began his super-powered career as Galactus's herald, and while working in this capacity, he enjoyed surfing the cosmos, traveling through black holes, and resting in the center of stars. His power cosmic gave him the ability to do pretty much anything and travel wherever he wanted to go. But that all changed when he defied his master. Galactus, being as petty as he is bloody huge, punished the Silver Surfer by trapping him on Earth, making it impossible for him to leave the atmosphere and once again surf the cosmos. Cosmos. But that wasn't the only thing that he did. He also informed his former Herald that now his homeworld was back on the menu for absorption, so all the Silver Surfer could do was wait on Earth with this threat that this could happen at any time hanging over him. Number 7. Being Stuck Between Life and Death the Infinity Gauntlet series played out a bit differently in the comic books than it did on the silver screen. That's quite the understatement, actually, because in the books, Thanos acquired the gems and assembled his gauntlet, but once this was complete, he went to war with pretty much every remaining character in the Marvel Universe. This included every cosmic being, including Celestials and even Galactus. But with the power of the Infinity Gauntlet, he was able to subdue them easily and bend the lot of them to his will. Using all of this power, he even placed himself as the new eternity, becoming one with the entire universe. Yet, before all of this happened, he resurrected Nebula. But he didn't bring her back to life in a nice, clean package, she was more of a husk of her former self being neither dead nor alive, forever stuck between life and death floating in space. Eventually, she managed to free herself, but for a long old while, this was a truly torturous existence. Number 6. Aging Rapidly Into Oblivion the Crisis on Infinite Earths event was one of the biggest to shake up the DC Universe since the publisher started pumping out comic books nearly a century ago, and it left fans reeling when favorite characters were changed forever, including, of course, the fate of Barry Allen. In the eighth issue of the series, Barry saved the multiverse, but it cost him his life, and it was not a pleasant death in the slightest. Here, Barry managed to foil the Anti-Monitor's plan to take out the Earth with an antimatter cannon. He did this by running faster than he 
they'd ever run before, creating a speed vortex which pulled the power of the cannon into its wake. He ran so fast that he began running backwards in time, and the strain on his body was too much for him. As he called out for help, he began to age rapidly and turned to dust before his friend's eyes. It might have looked quick, but to run yourself out of existence? Well, that's pretty brutal to say the least. Number 5. Never Make a Deal with the Devil When Al Simmons was brutally murdered, he wasted no time in attempting to return to the land of the living. He was cast into hell for his life of government-sanctioned murder and mayhem, which brought him to the attention of a demon who offered Al a deal. Now this is the thing, becoming Spawn might seem like a great gig seeing as you're effectively immortal and have some insane powers, but it does come with a price, as what the demon wanted in exchange for all of this power was Al's identity. As such, Al Simmons was erased from history and now he is forced to watch his family live on without him. What's worse is that his close ties to the family actually resulted in a great deal of pain and suffering being sent their way. That makes being Spawn definitely a fate worse than death. Number 4. Being thrown into a tiny box and then being used as an energy source in Batman Incorporated number 2, Batman and Catwoman were going up against an immortal being called Lord Deathman, who could come back from the dead every time that he was killed. As you can imagine, that made him a pretty difficult foe to deal with. Well, that was until he got one of the most brutal endings imaginable. Batman chucked him off a building, leaving him prone enough so that Catwoman could stuff his body inside a cramped safe. But that wasn't the end of it, as this safe was then launched into orbit in a huge example of, eh, I can't really be bothered to deal with this problem right now so somebody else will sort it. However, this wasn't the end of his suffering, as Lord Deathman was eventually recovered by Ra's al Ghul and instead of letting him go, he kept him confined and used his body as a continuous source of so-called Lazarus blood, which works pretty much in the same way that the Lazarus pits did, keeping him alive for an unnaturally long amount of time. Number 3. Imprisonment in the Phantom Zone the Phantom Zone has been depicted in numerous ways over the years, but for the most part, comics have actually skipped around on its very nature. However, a relatively recent depiction quickly became one of the most frightening of all. In Action Comics Volume 2, number 13, we see the first person ever to be imprisoned in the Phantom Zone. As he's placed inside, he screams, What's happening? Why can't I see? I can't hear! Why can't I feel anything? This showcases a horrible existence. Unable to see, hear, feel, or age, anyone cast inside the Phantom Zone would be aware of their own existence but be unable to do anything about it. As you can imagine, this would be torture on the highest level to anyone put inside. Number 2. The Penance Stare so Ghost Rider is a truly impressive character. Firstly, his design is outrageously cool, and that is only equaled by his incredible powers that are purpose-designed to torture the wicked. When it comes time to deal with a bad guy up close and personal, Ghost Rider has several abilities at his command. He can detect sin, identify people based on their transgressions, and zero in on the worst things that they have ever done in their lives, and turn it back against them. He does this through his penance stare, which involves looking directly into the of his foes, and when he does this, that person feels all the pain and suffering that they have ever inflicted on anyone throughout their lifetime, and they feel it all at once and for all eternity. Now, it's fair to say that these individuals deserve to feel the suffering that they've caused, but for all eternity? Oof. And number one, gamma radiation doesn't turn you into a Hulk in real life. In the Marvel Universe, it seems that all anyone needs to do to score some dope superpowers is to bathe in radiation for a little bit. Hell, it worked for Daredevil, it gave Spider-Man his powers thanks to an irradiated spider bite, and of course, Bruce Banner got the big green treatment. That blast of gamma radiation transformed Bruce into the Incredible Hulk, a being who has saved and endangered the world in equal measure. However, this led many to question what would have happened to him in real life. Well, that's exactly the concept that's explored in the Marvel miniseries ruins. In this version, Bruce was still transformed, but instead of becoming the Hulk, he turned into a gigantic mass of tumors, which ended up turning most of his body inside out. What's worse is the fact that he continued to live through this in constant agony, with no hope of death or healing. And according to Rick Jones, he remains in a CIA facility where he's kept alive to be studied. Grim. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 comic fates that were worse than death. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further about all things to do with comic books, TV, film, video games, and anything else, then why not follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by my gaming channel, which is called Live and Let's Dice, where I'm doing loads of live streams and board games. So if that's your cup of tea, well, I'd like to see you over there. 
But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today about fates that were worse than death. And you know what? In our everyday lives, we can make our lives harder for ourselves without even realizing it sometimes. So what I'm going to say to you right now is it's okay to take a break. It is okay to take a step back from life and ask yourself some important and very simple questions such as, am I okay? And if you're not, that's okay. Because friends, family, professionals in the support industry, all of these people care about you and want you to do well. They know that you're a massive ledge and deserve to live a healthy and happy life. Big love from me to you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.